So last week I gave a talk at the DCMS about Media 2012. The audience was principally higher education professionals, mainly people in a strategic position. Uh, I gave the talk and during it I made a claim that I hadn't thought about very much before I said it, but nevertheless it came out and I felt, why not? The claim was that Media 2012 is the most radical project associated with the London 2012 Games. And I thought it'd be good to do a video just explaining what I meant by that and why I think we could make this kind of argument. Uh, in order to do so, you need to clarify a couple of things. What do we mean by a project associated with London 2012? And what do we mean by radical? It seems to me that one of the ways in which radical activity takes place around the Olympics is through protests. And I've been to six Olympic Games now, and I've seen a range of things. I've seen graffiti, I've seen violent activism, I've seen campaigns about the Olympics and protesting what they stand for. I've seen campaigns take place during the Olympic Games that are completely unrelated to the Olympics. And so clearly the Olympic period gives rise to a, a huge range of uh, activities that could be seen as both radical uh, and activism. Now I want to keep that terminology in association with Media 2012, but what's crucial to me is that the project isn't just about trying to burn down the house, so to speak. Um, in fact, it's not about that at all. It seems to me there are, there are at least two ways you could be radical uh, in relation to the Olympics. You could, you could protest all the fundamental uh, building blocks that underpin its current uh, structure and say they all need to change. This is something that is fundamentally broken and radical change needs to take place. We're not really doing that, or well, at least I'm not really doing that. We have some people in our community that, that do feel that way, but we're not really a radicalised organisation in that way. Instead, I think uh, if the analogy is, let's say, for example, going around to someone's house for dinner, uh, you could either get around to their house and decide to burn down the house um, before having your dinner, or you can decide to enter their house and try to engage them with critical, constructive dialogue to try to change the way they operate. Um, and Media 2012 does that. I think it's trying to change aspects of the Olympic program that are not necessarily broken, but inadequate. Uh, inadequate to fulfill the mission of the Olympic movement, inadequate do, to do justice to the kinds of opportunities that the Olympics really affords, uh, because it really is a unique organisation that has certain degrees of freedom and access to change that I think make it responsible to ensure take place. And so Media 2012 I think is radical because it proposes an alternative to the current model, specifically the current model of how the Olympic movement is funded by mm. Olympic broadcast revenue. Now, it's not to say that the project is anti-television or anti-professional anti, uh, journalism, far from it. In fact, the, the whole thing is, is really about trying to connect media production with society in a way that I think, if you look at the current crisis in the UK around media ethics, you could certainly argue that, that people feel that the, the journalists that we have may be good, many of them may be excellent, but the system is, is somehow broken. The, 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 the range of accountabilities, the kinds of uh, priorities that seem to underpin media production need a radical overhaul. And so Media 2012, in the context of what is effectively the biggest media event in the world, makes the claim that this change needs to take place within this particular practice, in this particular community. The way it does that is by trying to expand media production, media citizenship, beyond professional broadcasters and accredited organisations. So the people involved are already signed up to that idea that what really distinguishes the 21st century, at least in information technology terms, is the ability to try to change and renegotiate the terms of production and ownership. Uh, we don't need to rely simply on those handful of large companies that control the media, certainly in the UK, in the US, which dominate media production. 
Media 2012 is an attempt to redress that balance. Um, and to that extent it's radical, I think, because it proposes a model and a way of experiencing the Olympics that flies in the face of this underpinning structure that is presently in place, but crucially has only been there for really less than 40 years. Since the mid-80s, this system has really been in place. The Olympics found a route through which to commercialise its assets, but that may need to change. That is something that um, becomes harder to sustain in a world where you have a more diverse media audience, a more diverse range of media artefacts to consume. So, to sum up, I think the uh, the other dimension of it is the, the fact that we are a project that has a relationship with the London Organising Committee. We are supported by institutions who do receive funds, albeit indirectly, from work associated with the Olympic movement. Uh, in the northwest of England, Media 2012 will be regarded as one of the official cultural Olympiad projects in that region. We have supporters from the cultural programmers, sorry, the creative programmers around the UK. And so we have engaged with institutions and individuals who have a responsibility to safeguard those Olympic values. But importantly, the Olympic uh, values that we think matter require some degree of change and expansion to take place within the Olympic movement in order for it really to be genuinely democratic, genuinely participatory, and really a social movement. Um, so are we the most radical project in the London 2012 Games? I think the fact that we'll be written up as a project associated with the Games in official terms, while at the same time using graphics like this to try to articulate a challenge to the current system by having things like the Media 2012 Charter that um, are mirroring the um, the Olympic Charter themselves itself. The design, the terminology within the Charter is designed specifically to confront those that are aware of it with the shortcomings in the Olympic Charter, the aspects of it that limit the success of the movement. These dimensions, in partnership with our relationship and our willingness to dialogue with both professional journalists, but the IOC and organising committees, along with the fact that this is not just something that we are looking at for 2012, I think makes us an incredibly radical project. It's something that will... Uh, didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of six Olympic Games worth of research and activity and partnerships. We are now an international movement of people that wants to change society and do that through the Olympic Games. Now, um, for those reasons, I think I can't think of anything else involved with the Olympic Games program of 2012 or the Paralympic Games that is as radical. Everything that's programmed, everything that's commissioned, has to fall in line with certain uh, principles that uphold the Olympic movement. Now, whilst some of those principles, if not all of them, are quite malleable, I think we are challenging them in a way that... Uh, brings into question the current mechanisms through which they are delivered. It's not sufficient for us, or at least for me, to say, well, the Olympics are about spent friendship, so how do we celebrate that through our content? No, it's about trying to challenge the, the present way in which those values are delivered. And uh, Media 2012 is all about trying to do that.